So Bruce, here we are, almost nearing 30 episodes of Positively Trek, and I think it's going pretty well. I'm really enjoying this, really enjoying our Lower Decks coverage over on that sub show and our books coverage on the book club. It's like our podcast has grown into its full form at this point. It's interesting that you're pointing out 30 episodes. This is what, episode 29, so we're almost at 30. And just about, yeah. Yeah, and I feel like we're really just started. And it's like, well, 30's pretty good. I mean, you know, I, it just doesn't feel like it's been that long, but it doesn't even feel like we've done that much. Like, I, It's not like I feel like, oh my gosh, yeah, we've done 30. It feels like we've done 30. It feels like we've just done 10. Yeah, that's that, and I feel like that's a good sign. feels like we could go on forever doing this because it's, you know, just been so much fun. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, we're at episode number 5,082 right now and in the year <laughs> 2053. The Vulcans are going to land soon. <laughs> <laughs> we're staying on until it happens. <laughs> Excellent. Well, you are listening to Positively Trek. I am Dan Gunther. With me, of course, is Bruce Gibson. And we're happy to bring you all of the week's Star Trek news and all of the really cool things happening in the Star Trek universe. For those of you wondering about our Star Trek Lower Decks coverage, we do that in a separate episode. That would have been the episode that came out before this one. And we try to keep this episode spoiler free for those of you who maybe aren't watching Lower Decks or uh, can't watch Lower Decks yet. So if you are interested in our thoughts on the most recent episode of Lower Decks, be sure to check out episode number 28. We talk about the most recent episode, Envoys. Yes, and then make sure you stay for the next episode, episode 30, where we have David Mack on talking about his new Star Trek novel, More Beautiful Than Death, which takes place in the Kelvin timeline. So that mm -hmm. is exciting. If you haven't read that, it's a quick read, everyone. Like, grab it, read it. It's fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm just about finished it now and really enjoying it, too. I think it's a really fun story. Yes, me too. Well, we've got lots to talk about this week. And the first bit of news that kind of stumbled across my desk a few days ago was about Star Trek Prodigy. And that is the other Star Trek animated series coming on Nickelodeon uh, in 2021. And they have found their director by the sounds of it. So they've hired Ben Hibon from Code Hunters, and he will direct, co executive produce, and serve as the creative lead of Star Trek Prodigy. Now, if you haven't heard of this guy, he's a really talented guy. One of my favorite things that they mentioned that he's done is he directed the animated Tale of Three Brothers. And that was an animated sequence in the film Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. So if you know this sequence that I'm talking about, it's beautiful animation, just gorgeous. And uh, I, I'm really excited. It's really cool that they've they've acquired this talent for Prodigy. Yeah, I'm not really that familiar with his work outside of what you just said about the Tale of Three Brothers, which I really did enjoy from Harry Potter. But uh, that's really all I know about him. It's saying a lot in a, in a lot of ways to me because I don't think this is going to be just standard animation that we're used to. It may be something a little different. And maybe that's why we haven't seen anything right now. I do kind of hope it's something very different than what we're used to. I mean, even Lower Decks is different from the animated series and its animation style. And I'm hoping this stands on its own in its own style. Yeah. And we do know from things that have been told to us by people in the know that this is going to be very unique, very interesting corner of the Star Trek universe. And one person we talked to said it's some of the best Star Trek he's ever seen in his life. And that's just kind of going by the scripts that he's told us about. So, man, I'm excited for this. It sounds really interesting. I think it's going to definitely be worth checking out, whether you're young or old. Uh, but, you know, it's definitely supposed to be geared towards a younger audience. So I think it could be a really interesting way to bring new fans into Star Trek. So speaking of style, I want to talk about the logo. I've been obsessed with logos lately. And again, the Star Trek logo that they're using in Prodigy is the old school TOS style uh, font for Star Trek. And again, that's how they advertised Picard. But then when we actually watch Picard, they're using the Discovery style for Star Trek in its logo. 
then we're using the old style Star Trek in Lower Decks and maybe even in Prodigy. And I just think it's interesting. It's not something that I'm complaining about, but I just think it's interesting that that seems to be the style they want to stick with is the old school Star Trek style and not anything that's followed it. You know, it's like we're going back 50 plus years ago to that look as opposed to the style used in the movies and the other TV shows and such. I feel like they're wanting to have like a cohesive brand image across all of the, you know, and maybe not necessarily for the couple seconds that we get it in the opening credits for Picard, but for all of the branding and all of the the promotion, it feels like they're keeping that style for the advertising for everything. And, And that includes all of the like products that we see, like if you notice the you know, any of the fan sets, pins, any of the board games, any of those things, they all have that same Star Trek logo on it. So I really feel like this is a, a CBS brand push for Star Trek. Yeah, because the Star Trek brand has so many looks. We have so many in TNG. That look is different. The movies had its look. There's various, even Nemesis has a very different look for the Star Trek treatment. And then, of course, you know, Enterprise and, of course, Discovery and such. There's been various different interpretations of that. And so it's interesting that it goes back to the very first original. Well, it's not the very first original. If you really want to be nitpicky into the TOS pilot, it didn't use that logo. But you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but I mean, that pilot was unaired until the 1980s. So I think this is the original as far as anybody would have seen on television for sure. Absolutely. So the other thing I want to mention is the logo is always showing Nickelodeon above it because Nickelodeon is the network that's going to show Prodigy. Now, we talked about this one other time briefly, but CBS All Access, of course, is owned by Viacom CBS. And now they're showing some Nickelodeon properties among some other properties from their other networks on the CBS All Access service. So the question is, will Prodigy show up on CBS All Access? I'm not really sure, but I feel like there might be a good possibility. Again, I I mentioned this in a a previous episode. I think it might be delayed if it's not the day of. It might be delayed a month or so. But I'm starting to wonder more and more because now they're going through a rebranding of CBS All Access. And this would really help drive people to the service by having the Star Trek series on there. Yeah, that would be interesting. The article that I'll share in the show notes that talks about this new director for Prodigy does say Star Trek Prodigy will debut exclusively on Nickelodeon in 2021 for a new generation of fans. So it does sound like the current plan anyway is for it to be exclusive to Nickelodeon. But like you say, possibly a month or or however long later, it could show up on CBS All Access. Yeah. So yeah, when CBS All Access premiered, I thought, I I don't see that name sticking. It just doesn't sound all that great to me. And CBS is a good brand, but it appeals to a slightly older audience. And now that they put these other properties in, now, of course, there's this rebrand they're talking about doing. And the latest rumor, and based on uh, the Trek movie article, have is Paramount+. Plus. Now, I find this interesting that this just came out because about a week ago, so I work in the television industry and in the trades, there was announcement that in Australia, they're rebranding All Access to 10 All Access. And then the Nornix and Latin America, they're rebranding it Paramount Plus. And I remember last week I was thinking, I wonder if they'll rebrand it Paramount Plus here in America. And then to hear this rumor... It's making me wonder if that, because it's very similar to like Disney Plus. Yeah, I did notice that. And I I kind of like, that's kind of a draw against it, in my opinion, is like, it feels like they're following Disney Plus, which I'm like, "Uh." but overall, I like bringing in the name Paramount. Like it's got a lot of history. Like you said, CBS I guess the the consensus or the the general general feeling is that does skew older audience wise and you know maybe seen as kind of a little bit out of touch maybe that kind of thing Paramount you know also a very old brand it's you know it's the second oldest film studio in the US so you know it's it's a name that's been around forever but with that kind of comes that history and and stuff so i could see them going with that name and i could see it working out really well for them it's interesting that this article says you know there's 
kind of a short list of names. There's also a part of me that wonders if they'll try to capitalize on the Paramount brand because it's known more worldwide than CBS is and Viacom is. Instead of having your corporate name Viacom CBS, I'm wondering if eventually they'll just call their corporation Paramount. And all these properties from CBS and Nickelodeon and such all fall under the Paramount corporate entity. And therefore, just, you know, like Disney, you have Disney and owns all these properties. Then you'd have Paramount that owns all these properties. And you have the service Paramount Plus. And they rebranded Spike TV to the Paramount Network. That was a couple of years ago. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, it's definitely interesting that, you know, you could really get into the weeds with all this corporate stuff. And it's kind of it. It's crazy. The Wikipedia rabbit hole you can go down with, like all these relations between different companies and stuff. You know, one of the things that comes out of this, too, is all of the Star Trek shows that air on CBS All Access are branded as CBS All Access Originals. So presumably, if that changes, that kind of branding would change on the Star Trek episodes as well. Which means we're back to the Star Trek episodes as being Paramount properties. Because Mm -hmm. when Desilu sold their studio to Paramount, the original series then was under the Paramount banner. And then we had TNG all the way through Enterprise. Those were all Paramount. The movies were all Paramount. I mean, that's Star Trek history right there. It's almost full circle, you know, because season three was all branded Paramount. It would be completely full full circle if for some reason, you know, Viacom CBS instead decided to rename themselves Desi Lu. And I mean, I'm behind (laughs) that decision. (laughs) That I would support. Yes. (laughs) I don't think it would happen, but yeah, I'll go for that. I don't think so either. It'd be great though. Um, But yeah, so... It'd be interesting to keep our eyes on what's going to happen with CBS All Access, regardless of whether they end up going with Paramount Plus, there is a big rebranding coming. So, you know, we don't necessarily know what the final look of that will be, but it's going to be some interesting times ahead for sure. Yeah, don't hold your breath. It's still going to be a little while. Well, we also have some news from the world of Star Trek books to comment on, and uh, we have a new novel coming in November. And we've talked a little bit about this already. Greg Cox is writing an original series novel called A Contest of Principles. And we have the cover for that. And I'll have a link in the show notes to the story on the trekcollective.com. You can go check that out. But uh, it, this is a very different look to a novel than we've seen lately, a a pretty big departure for the look of the original series novels. And that's after what's already been a recent change with the Star Trek branding going up the side of the book, but now it's back to kind of horizontal and we've got some like photos being used in this photoshopped cover here, greens and blues. It's kind of a beautiful cover, very different from what we've seen before. Okay, so you're going to laugh at this, Dan. Even as you're talking through it, I still haven't clicked on it to see the cover. Oh, okay. So based just on my description then, what are you kind of picturing? Because, you know, people at home listening to this podcast don't have the benefit of seeing it right in front of them unless they're, you know, clicking on the show notes as I'm speaking. So when you're saying green and stuff, I was picturing uh, very something like Green Lantern looking. (laughs) I don't know why, but that's where my brain went. All right, I'm going to click on it now. Okay, here we go. My first reaction. Oh, my gosh. It's it's coming up. It's coming up. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, Very different, right? Yeah, it is. Honestly, my first reaction is like, I don't know if I like this. Huh. Um, No, actually, it's, yeah, it is different. I think that, you know what it is? I, I like the style. I like the look. Yeah, I like the Star Trek logo in green i like the blue background i like the little enterprise below the star trek logo with the original series i like that too i like the inclusion of the enterprise in that yeah i think the thing is it's like you said photoshop i think what Mm -hmm. i don't really care for that much is using actual photos of the actors from the original series in this because it does feel very photoshop to me as opposed to artwork that's done yeah you know someone paints something I do miss the days of like like the Keith Bird song covers and, and Drew Blair. And yeah, that's really too bad. Yeah. But I will say this is probably one of my least favorite covers this year. 
if probably not my least favorite. It's not that I don't like it. It's just, yeah, I prefer more original art. But, you know, I shouldn't even say that because even the last book, this book, More Beautiful Than Death, uses actual images from the Kelvin Timeline movies. But I like this look better. I'm holding the book up, the David New David Mac book to Dan. That's how I keep saying this book. I like this look better than this new one. Yeah, not bad, but I don't know. Yeah, mm, it's, I don't like it as much as the others, the styles. But <laughs> it, it, I, I do think it looks pretty attractive. It's just not my favorite. Well, this novel, regardless, sounds pretty interesting. Uh, like we said, it's coming out in November from New York Times bestselling author Greg Cox, uh, original series novel. Definitely excited about this. I don't know. Do we want to read the back cover blurb for the audience for this one? Yeah, let's do it. I haven't even heard this. The planet Vok is holding its first free elections after years of oppressive military rule. Captain James T. Kirk and the crew of the Starship Enterprise have been dispatched by Starfleet to serve as impartial observers, but remaining neutral proves a challenge as Kirk confronts a tangled web of scandal, conspiracy, and assassination plots with the stability of an entire sector at stake. To make matters worse, Dr. Leonard McCoy has vanished while on a mission of mercy to Bracco, a nearby planet only a system away. With Kirk unable to abandon his vital mission on Vok to hunt for his friend, it's up to First Officer Spock and Christine Chapel to lead a team in search of the missing doctor, even if it means risking whatever fate befell McCoy. Unknown to his friends and crewmates, however, McCoy has been spirited away to another world, Ozalor, where he's expected to find a cure for a mysterious ailment plaguing a member of the planet's ruling family. Torn between his Hippocratic oath and his desire to escape, McCoy finds himself at the center of deadly palace intrigues and a struggle for power that may ultimately consume all three worlds. I like this description here. It sounds interesting. It sounds like there's a lot going on in this novel, so it'd be interesting to see how... Uh, Greg Cox is able to weave all these story pieces together. Yes. So I'm really interested to read it, as always. And uh, I'm sure we'll have Greg Cox on and talk about it in a future episode. Definitely. Looking forward to that. Well, the final piece of news that I wanted to talk about that's going to lead us into kind of our brief discussion today is an interview with Alex Kurtzman with Award Buzz blog Gold Derby. And uh, he talks a bit about short treks and the upcoming seasons of Discovery, Picard, Strange New Worlds, and Section 31. So interestingly, he brings up Section 31 here, which is good to hear because the last we heard about it was uh, at that event in January. That was the last kind of confirmation we had that they were still working on it. They are still working on the first season of Section 31 and Strange New Worlds. So those are both going ahead. The other thing that I think is really interesting is the upcoming seasons of Star Trek Discovery. So we haven't had official word that it's renewed for season four, but there have been little hints here and there all over the internet. I know uh, YouTuber Ket Walski has done a lot of work looking at people's LinkedIn profiles and seeing evidence that they're working on season four of Discovery, <laughs> which is smart, kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it looks like season four is definitely coming and, uh, the writer's rooms of all of the shows are in full swing over zoom, apparently with the current kind of working from home protocols that are still, uh, being enacted right now. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me. I think I've heard that we're going to get at least five seasons of discovery. Yeah. I've, I've heard those rumors as well, but again, like nothing officially announced, but, uh, it's good to see, I guess you could call this official word coming down because it's Alex Kurtzman. And regardless of how many times people on the internet say he's been fired, he is still kind of the official word of Star Trek right now. Yeah. You know, he's like the Kenny of South Park. He keeps getting fired, but he's there the next week. Oh my God, they fired Kurtzman. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, no, he's still there. <laughs> he's still there. He's like way no, in. I... They have a whole like, cloning facility of Kurtzman's just waiting. Controversial opinion, I know. I think he's done an amazing job helming Star Trek. I mean, with the number of series we have on the go and the quality of the product that's been put out, uh, I'm a hundred percent behind what he's been doing for Star Trek. So I know, I know hot take controversial opinion. <laughs> well, and the thing is, and of course none of us work in that situation, but he may be helming things, but he's not the creative end of it all. You know, there's mm -hmm. many people involved in this. 
You know? Absolutely. He could say, yeah. hey, do a series on this, but then it takes the creative minds of the writers and the actors and the producers and so on and so forth, directors, what have you, to come up with it. He's not dictating everything that's happening. Definitely. Definitely not. Uh, one of the things he talks about, though, is short treks, which is kind of cool because this is something we haven't seen for a while. We had the second batch of short treks after season two of Discovery. And with the recent Emmy nomination for short treks, he talks about how much he would like to see more short treks coming and talks about how it was a fun way to experiment with different parts of the Star Trek universe and I absolutely agree. I think this was a really fun form of Star Trek. And I personally really hope we see more as well. I love here he talks about, you know, he'd love to do a musical, for example. I don't know that I really agree with that, but, you know, what the heck? I'd watch it. Uh, <laughs> and he'd love to do one in black and white, figure out what that means. You know, I kind of like this idea of taking a strange idea for Star Trek and, and seeing what they could do. Like, for example, the short Trek animated one, Ephraim and Dot, is very different for anything Star Trek's ever done. And I thought it came out terrific. No, I absolutely agree. And it's also a process of discovery. I don't mean the series, but actually discovering new ways to present Star Trek. And if one thing really stands out and people love it, then you can create a new series based on that type of format on that way of shooting something. I'm not saying that they're going to do a whole series in black and white or a whole series as a musical, but there could be something that is discovered through that process that you can incorporate into a new series or an existing series. But I do like to see different creative outlets, different ways of interpretation of Star Trek and not worrying about so much does it fit canon, but just kind of enjoy a different take and a different look. You know, what if there's a short Trek that's very much a horror type of situation in Star Trek and it's it could be even a bit gory. I, you know, I don't know. It's like, but mm -hmm. yeah, you're, I'm like you, I don't necessarily want a musical Star Trek, but yeah, I'll watch it because it might be very interesting and I really might enjoy it. Yeah, totally. So what I thought would be kind of fun to kind of wrap up this episode with a bit of a discussion here is uh, what are our ideas? And, you know, I put this in the notes. No idea is a bad idea. Uh, what are kind of our thoughts for what would make some interesting short Trek stories? So I have a few ideas. I'm curious to know what you've come up with for this as well. So I, I think this could be a lot of fun. So my short treks are always expanding. I have so many freaking ideas. I'm just going to randomly pick one. And we just had recorded our Lower Decks review for the second episode. And it dawned on me of one of the things I do want to see in the short treks. I want to see a Lower Decks type short trek episode, but it's not the Lower Decks crew. It's one of the other Star Trek series, but done Lower Decks style. So I'd like to oh. see, for example, it could be Discovery. And you take Discovery and you do it almost like a Lower Decks episode. The characters are a bit more exaggerated. The situations are more exaggerated. There's more humor. It's just a funny take on that crew. It could be TOS. It could be TNG. Whatever series. I would just love to see something like that with the original actors. Of course, with TOS, you couldn't do that because half of them are gone. But with some of the others, like TNG might be a lot of fun. Oh, that would be great. That's interesting. That kind of fits in with one of my ideas that I thought would be pretty cool. I would be interested in seeing a Dixon Hill short trek oh, yeah. starring Patrick Stewart and and you know, we, we could have Patrick Stewart, we could have Picard and data and even like Whoopi Goldberg as Guinan being Gloria from Cleveland in, in this, and it could be animated, you know, you, you, to get those characters looking the way you would want them to, you could do just a straight up animated version of that. And it could also be the black and white one that they talked about here as well. Yeah. I think that would be a fun little vignette. I like that. <laughs> yeah. The other thing I would like to see now that Viacom and CBS have merged, I don't know if we will ever get another Kelvin Timeline movie, but why not mm. a Kelvin Timeline short track? No, it won't be the whole crew and it won't be that kind of big movie budget type situation, but take one of those characters, you know, Yahora or Sulu or even Dr. McCoy and just give them a little adventure in the Kelvin timeline. It doesn't have to be on the Enterprise. It could be on a ship. It could be at Starfleet headquarters. Where have you, wherever you want to put them. I think that would be really cool. 
How about a Scotty and Keenster adventure? I'd love it. In Short Tracks. I love Keenster. I really do. With Simon Pegg voicing Scotty. And yeah, that'd be great. But no, don't voice it. Like, I don't even want to animate. I want it live action. That, okay, that'd be cool. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, not animated. I mean, I'd be fine with animated, but I would love to see it live action where you just get one of those actors or two of them and you give them like a little 15 minute short trick. Another idea I had, and, and again, actually had this one before the Dixon Hill idea. This isn't I, like all my ideas aren't just, you know, take holodeck things and make them into short treks. But I would love to see a Captain Proton short trek with That's a good like, one. yeah, bring back uh, Harry Kim and Tom Paris and have them do, you know, maybe they've been home for a while and they like got together and decided to do a captain proton adventure have dayton ward write it i know he loves captain proton i think that'd be a lot of fun yeah there's so many possibilities i just yeah my head's just swimming with all kinds of things i'd, I'd love to see follow-ups to ds9 and voyager like i mean just imagine something where it's you know an older janeway and chakotay just even if they were just sitting there having coffee about talking about the last 20 some years and how it's been since they've returned from the Delta Quadrant. I mean, it sounds a bit boring of them just sitting there having coffee, but I'm just saying like you could do some follow up and it's like, oh, now we find out what happened to them after Voyager or after DS9 or even Enterprise. My final idea, and this is the one that I really, 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 really want to see is like a 10 to 15 minute long short trek and it's just Garrick and Bashir reuniting for lunch. Okay, you know what? I was thinking that last night, that exact same thing. Because I'm, I'm watching, I was watching DS9 last night, The Dogs of War. And I was just thinking, you know, that would be a good short trek. Just Garrick and Bashir doing whatever. Yes. Yep. Yes. <laughs> yes. I really want to see that. I do like, too. Oh. That's the one. If we had to choose one, since we're both excited about that, that's the one that we have to awesome. write into CBS for. We have to have that one for sure. Ah, oh, that would be so great. I would be so over the moon for that. <laughs> so here's my bonus one. It probably doesn't sound that attractive, but you know, William Shatner, one last time as Kirk. And I know Kirk died and he's too old, Like, but this is the Kirk I want. I want to see William Shatner return as Kirk in a short treks, but it's the mirror universe, older Kirk who didn't die. Oh, interesting. I like it. There you go. That's my bonus one. Emperor Tiberius. Yes. I think is what they did in the novels. Maybe not necessarily the same thing. So, but yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. That could be really cool. I would love to hear what our audience thinks. So tweet to us at positively Trek or send us an email positively Trek at gmail.com. And I'm putting it out there. What short treks ideas would you want to see? I would love to hear different ideas from you guys. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter at Kurtrats, K-E-R-T-R-A-T-S. Uh, and uh, check out my YouTube channel. Just search Kurtrats Productions on YouTube. Yes, and you can find me on Twitter at Admiral underscore Rex. And I want you guys to just go out there and uh, purchase online Too Long a Sacrifice number two, the DS9 comic that just dropped today. Yes, we did forget to mention that. That is a good call. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Much obliged. Well, thank you all so much for listening. We'll see you next week. Uh, and actually, we'll see you before next week because you'll want to check out, like Bruce mentioned earlier, our book club episode coming out this Friday with David Mack on his new novel, More Beautiful Than Death. So we'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs>